Hey everyone, this is Chris Crazy House here, and I want to give my young artists and creators out there some tips for those who want to apply for a job in the arts. I'm going to let you guys know what you should probably have in your portfolios. But before I get to that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and make sure you go ahead and like my videos for those who want to get more information about the industry or you just want to hear me rant and chat about pop culture or if you're interested in my art and animation videos make sure you go ahead and subscribe and follow me here on this channel all links will be in the description box as well as my comment section if you want to support the channel go ahead and go to my online store where I have coloring books comic books posters and stickers of all of my products and you can get those on the online store you can also get my coloring books on amazon.com once again those links will also be in the description as well as the comment section and last but not least another way to support the channel is to go ahead and become a patreon of chris crazy house right now i got some new stuff on the patreon we got some brand new clip art for black families out there as well as some curvy cutie clip art cartoon cats clip art got some griffins on there and i have some exclusive coloring pages of naturally cute on there as well so you can go to my patreon five bucks a month and you can download all types of original artwork that you cannot get anywhere else on my patreon so moving forward just talking about your portfolio what prompted me to do this is just having conversations with my wife she's been doing a lot of hiring at her job she's not in the art field she's in the medical field but still doing hiring there she and i just you know kind of going over what a lot of young people come in with when it comes to their resume or you know when they're showing off you know past places that that they've worked at and their work history and just say thinking you know going back and forth you know i've never been and uh I've, well, I've owned my own business and i've had i've worked for myself as a contractor i've never really been the head of a company but i've been the head of certain production teams and i've also been a supervisor at times so it's very important that you understand what people like myself who are who may have some say in the hiring process especially like you know sometimes even guys who are like the leaders of my team they'll show me the work of possible hires and i this is what i would look for if someone was looking to with me for a job so basically first and foremost just let me say if you want to work at a certain position at a certain in a certain field your portfolio should be geared towards that and what i mean by that is if you want to be a comic book artist you need to be submitting actual comic book art it's even better if you have a full comic book that's actually been done and published likewise if you want to work in games you should have some game work already done see what i'm saying and let the you know i know games and comics and even animation are a collaborative effort sometimes there's more than one person involved so make sure you let the people know what parts you worked on in any of those mediums so if you were working in comics and you were the one that did all the pencils let them know that if especially if you're trying to get a job as a penciler or let them know you did the colors or let them know you did the inking also let people know if you worked in games let them know if you did the animation if you did the rigging if you did the programming if you just designed the backgrounds if you just did the sound editing let people know what you did so it's not just a hodgepodge of information that you're giving them they want a lot of people especially in this industry it moves so fast they want the information of what you did very quickly when it comes to hiring because they don't have a lot of time or they may have a bunch of people applying for the same job so they kind of have to get through them quick and see which person makes the best fit to get to the next uh, round of whatever hiring that they're doing 
Same thing with animation. If you want to apply for an animation job, make sure you show actual animation. You know what I'm saying? So I know that some of this might sound basic and it might sound like obvious that this is what you should have in your portfolio, but some people, they apply to certain jobs and they have mismatch or just things that have nothing to do with what they're applying for. Like I remember I had someone apply for a gaming job like we were working on social games and they were just showing like still images and we're I needed someone for the actual doing the animation likewise I was working I was working at a company doing art and animation for mobile phones and you know people were submitting things like you know posters and comic book pages not really the same thing okay so Make sure you gear it. And, and, and let me say this to you guys. I'm a person who, as an artist, I might be able to see that you can, if, if this person knows how to draw, you know, Looney's Tune style cartoons, maybe they'll be good for doing animation in, you know, on TV or in games or something, right? Because I'm an artist, I might be able to see that. But you have to understand, most of the people who are doing the hiring don't have that mindset. I know this sounds crazy, but a lot of people in the creative field that do hiring are not artists themselves. HR people are notorious, <laughs> and I mean notorious for having no artistic mindset whatsoever. Sometimes it's better if you can. Sometimes they, a lot of these bigger companies, they, they put up a bulwark and a wall so you can barely get to these people. But if you can get to the art director or someone who's the lead on a project, or maybe even one of the head animators, if you can get in that way, it's better to do it that way than trying to go through HR, because HR is just gonna mess you up. In, in the creative field, that's just my humble opinion from my experience. I've gotten more jobs by meeting the people who are the leads of a team, who knew what art was, and I've gotten more jobs from people who already worked there. Like That's how I got my first job, as an intern at an animation company, because I went to school with the other animators who already worked there. You see what I'm saying? So they were able to introduce me to the boss that way. And then I, he saw my portfolio and knew what spot to put me in. Likewise, my very first job, I went to, I was called by the HR. They they knew where I had, where I had just graduated from. And I had had I didn't know this person, but I maybe had one or two classes with them when I was in the Art Institute. So he was there during my interview and he saw my portfolio and he later was in on the hiring. I found out, I found this out later on, but he was the one talking with the HR lady because she was there looking at my work and she liked it, but I don't even know if she knew what she was looking at per se. It's just cartoons for her. You know what I mean? Some people just don't have that artistic mindset, but the guy that I went to school with, who was an animator who had graduated just like me, he was able to see uh, what my talents and strengths were and, and that's how I got that job. So that's something that you should always consider. And if you can get that, that's the best way to go. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. I mean, your boy Chris Crazy House has applied to places like Konami and Nickelodeon and MTV and everything else where I just went through HR and never got a job at all and that's because I was always dealing with the HR people but then I've also had work featured on Google Google Play and CNN and I went through completely different means you see what I'm saying so you got to be careful sometimes it's hard to get to who you need to get to get your work there but like I said, if you're applying for an art job, like if you're doing comic books, make sure you actually have some comic book, like sequential art. For This is very specific for comic books. Don't come there with just pinups. That's cool and all, and it's cool to let them know that you can draw, but they need to see that you can actually put a story together on the page. You can actually do work in panels. That's very important to comic books, so make sure that that's what you showcase. If you're doing storybooks, I've done that as well if you're doing storybooks for kids make sure you showcase that you maybe if you've even done some storybooks of your own even if they're self-published 
you know that that it still goes a long way to show that you know how to put a book together you see what i'm saying so make sure you always gear your work and your portfolio to what you're applying for and understand that sometimes the best way to get in there is to get in through someone who already works there a connection that way an art director or someone who has more to do with the actual work that you're going to be doing it's not going to happen just in my opinion because hr a lot of times they don't know what they're looking at what they're talking about they just have a a certain list of things that that their corporate heads tell them to look for and they look for that but a lot of times they're not really savvy as far as the creative field of what the person actually needs so those are some tips I can give you for your portfolio right now. I'll probably do another one of these videos just letting you know maybe the content that you should have in the portfolio. I'll save that for a separate video because that this could go on a lot longer. But this is kind of just get, letting you know how to get your foot in the door and just letting you know from my experience what I've gone through and what worked for me. Anyway, if you have any questions in the comment section, please feel free to ask if you want to talk about it. Oh my live art videos on Thursday nights between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. I'm always there in the live chat. We can talk about it there as well. And once again, make sure you follow me here on this, this channel and I'll give you some more tips as far as being an artist or an animator that works within the industry. Anyway, Chris Crazy House signing out. Peace.